Welcome to Lock and Key Unlocked, a podcast about Lock and Key on Netflix, as well as the comic books by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. I'm Alex. I'm Justin. I'm Unlocked. Pete. And oh, we boy. are going to be talking about Season 2, Episode 8, Irons in the Fire. So go watch it if you haven't, because we're going to spoil it. But big jump through history for Lock and Key here as we jump back in time. See a lot more of what went on in 1775. We got a tease of it right at the beginning of the season here. But now we loop back to that. We show what happened before. We show what happened after. Or them damn redcoats. The, them damn. You're still upset about this. Still mad. I got to tell you, Pete, wait do you, you should go see the musical Hamilton if you want to be <laughs> real mad. Mm-hmm. Those guys did way more than just this little cave situation. Oh, I thought you meant because of all the rapping. Like, come on, that didn't yeah. happen back then. That's oh, not history. No. That's you not don't how that, that happened. You don't know Come that. On. You weren't there. I've seen Alex has protested the Hamilton musical every day <laughs> since it mm-hmm. opened. I've been out there. Even it's been closed for a year and a half at this yeah, point. I've still been out say. there every day. Been like, You're come right. on, enough already with the rapping. Let me in. Give me cheaper tickets. <laughs> Let me please, <laughs> please. I want to see. It. I demand to see it again. What a please, scam! I, I love this show. It makes me cry every time. It does. Anyway, back in the day, we found out more about Captain Frederick Gideon, a sadistic redcoat. This guy's evil. Not a, not a very nice redcoat. Most redcoats, very nice, as we saw with Josh yeah. in previous episodes. Oh, come on, man. This episode hot, turns out so some hot. of them not very nice. Stop it. But in fact, they killed Peter Locke, a ancestor mm. of the modern day Locks, spurred ah. on his son, Benjamin Locke, to learn how to forge whispering iron and make keys. So we got a yes. whole origin story there. Meanwhile, a lot of Johnny Tremaine vibes. The mm-hmm. Redcoats are oh. coming and they're beautiful, is what Paul Revere said. <laughs> <laughs> Classic reference there. Man, I, that brings me back. I read that book so many times in elementary school. And junior high school, and then probably stopped by high school. I think. It's, I hope so because you're, you're reading about BC Boys, Paul Revere. No, I'm talking yep, about the Johnny book Johnny Tremaine, Tremaine which taught oh, me to be careful sorry. with stuff that's hot. One hundred percent. I'm totally there <laughs> with you. One hundred percent. So I got all my hands and fingers mm-hmm. and everything all in good shape. Yeah. Don't uh, don't stay. Go get near hot iron. But that is something that we find out a lot more about this episode because Gabe is using the demon key to create his demon army as we talked oh, about as we not so much speculated as he straight up told us at the end of the last episode <laughs> and Eden is pretty pissed about it she wants to get into the demon party but they don't want her at the demon party which is a real bummer mm-hmm. for her so she starts some plans of her own specifically she's got eyes for hot Josh she's yeah, got eyes for hot Josh and trying to work here her magic there or demon magic, so that's heating up. That'll be interesting to follow. That's heating and up. And meanwhile, with the demon keys on the loose, the Lockheeds very quickly find out because Detective Maduku has been oh, corrupted no. by Josh. Ooh. That you got to test by, everybody. By Gabe, you don't know not who. Josh. You got to test Josh. everybody. You said you said yeah, Josh got oh, it. Only sexually. I, I've been corrupted by Josh. That's true. That's <laughs> and exactly it, right. Chiseled chin. And so they end up testing everybody, and even worse than Detective Matuku, Gabe gets to Jackie. Jackie Aww. has been corrupted by a demon. It's a gutting moment when Tyler finds this out. Uh, and by the end of the episode, they have realized the way to beat these demons is to come up with a key of their own. We loop back to the hat. By the keys piece with of keys. Lore. He finds out there's one piece of whispering iron that his dad, he had four emergencies, in the fishing lure on his hat. Or emergencies. And they are going to forge a key of their own in order to unlock the demons for everybody, and that's where we kind of end up. Lots more stuff, of course, happened in this episode, but again, we are on a we're on a roller coaster ride here, is what's oh, going on. Man. Which is wild. It, but this is like a roller coaster where it's like you think this is the bottom, it can go much lower yeah, than this. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Because it's not a raising my hands over my head thrill ride. I'm stressed, and I'll tell oh, you what, yeah. I got stressed. bad vibes about the next episode. I got big bad vibes about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm super worried. But you and know, like, I haven't watched no, it. I'm I not a cheater. I think it'll no. be fun. It no, seems no. Fun like time. maybe you are a cheating. Uh, <laughs> I, but I promise. I, no, I know. We, we talked about this before we got on that it's killing you. You just want to watch the next episode right now, but we try to. I, we stay. I don't want to. We got to stop and do a podcast first, bro. I don't want to p- unlock a demon of uh, spoilers into my mm-hmm. brain before we talk about it because I know that's Alex is a fully demon when it comes to spoilers, and that's one hundred percent. Yeah. But what's going to happen next? I don't know. 
<laughs> you see? He enjoys it, too. Look how much he likes it. And plus, he's sort of flirtier in a weird way. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is weird. Mm, bite him on that. Anyways, yeah. so Absolutely we start demonic. with a crane shot, a, a giant, like, kind of crane there shot. There we go with your film in. school education. Yeah, you dude. know, we kind of, it, you know, it could be a drone. It was really long, you know, but it was super smooth. Maybe so it was maybe a drone was a on a crane. A crane. Ooh, uh, wow. that's smart. Best use of a drone. Uh, yeah, <laughs> drone crane. If your drone gets tired, you want to put it on the crane and just like let it take a ride. Let's talk about the past stuff in total. Yeah, I think we can talk yeah. about that separately, even though obviously Josh doing some weird research here. I don't know where he's reading this stuff because we're all getting it through his flashbacks. I'll yeah. tell you what, I know there is so much going on in the show right now, and I understand why they didn't do it. I wish we got just an episode set in the past because that stuff mm. is so interesting. No I way. Like it so much. Um, no, no, no. I, I think like, I love them starting here. I love them showing the past history of Key House. This is something in the comic books, Kinsey and Tyler use, I'm forgetting the name. It's not the clock key, but there's a clock in Key House that can travel back to throughout the time periods uh, in the lock history Specifically, like, they could start here, where we start, and that's pretty much it. And they can so, watch history unfold. Exactly. Uh, but not as legend. ghosts, but just sort of as passive observers. They're not really there. They can just see it happen. To the point that the scene of Gideon being hung with Benjamin and his sister watching him being hung is something straight out of the comic books. Like, that's where we start with this past history here, if I remember. It's called just, the time shift key, I believe. Time shift key. There just uh, real quick, uh, just because, you know, I, I don't know if a lot of people know how the post office works but if you're about to get hung if you put something you want mailed next to your chest and then put your jacket on it gets mailed after you get hung. it's one of the very oldest rules of the post office. yeah exactly uh, exactly don't they, can't afford a stamp put it in your pocket when you're getting hung yeah hanged, they'll, they'll mail know. that for you you know well, what i mean why, which is super nice think, of them how do you think so i think again we get pretty much confirmation that josh is an ancestor of Gideon or one of the Redcoats or something like that. But how do you think this journal that Gideon filled out and like Pete's joking about hid in his jacket here while he was uh, waiting to die in Wellhouse? How did it get to Josh? His father was a grave digger and the father kind of robbed that grave and went mm -hmm. through his stuff and then found the journal. I mean, I bet it was like if he hid it on his person and then his, you know, he wasn't... Uh, stripped after he was hung and then his body was given t back to his family. I don't think they did that back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, now he's hung, strip a dude. Uh, no, I mean, I don't think they got bodies back to where, to people. I think they were like, he died here and here's where he's buried. Right. Um, Just dig a hole, I, I think it, let him fall think, right into it. The intention was he tucked it away. They used to, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but they used to bury people standing up, right? That's right. It was, and then there was a Dropped lot of right digging. Dropped right the hole and then, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of that's why flowers is like planting flowers. Mm -hmm. What? It's you a more plant efficient. Flowers. I mean, particularly in wartime, it's a more efficient use of space if you bury people standing up instead of flat because you can bury more of them. What What's happened here? Can we talk about the show? That's why I don't want to take up a lot of space. So I'm going to be I'm buried in tiny pieces just everywhere. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'm going to be <laughs> fertilized. <laughs> in your will, it says spread my chucks, right? Yeah, I want to be chunks. made into Chuck. Call me Chuck. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah, let's so let's talk through maybe just the historical stuff first, since we could that sort of stands alone. Um, this this guy was a jerk, Gideon, mm -hmm. before he became a demon. Not nice. Hey, uh, real quick, if you guys like were looking out your window and saw bad guys coming with torches, do you think he'd just keep staring at the window for a while, or would you just kind of like turn and run no, right I, away? I, again, I know you're joking, and not to treat it seriously, but I do like the mini arc we get here with Benjamin, where we see him. He doesn't know what his destiny is. He's not as good of a blacksmith as his father. He doesn't know how to step Classic up. Tale. And I think what happens at this point is he's terrified for a second. Like, he doesn't know what yeah. to do. But then he is able to warn his father. And ultimately, he finds his courage here. He finds his journey as a blacksmith. And he figures out how to make these keys along with his sister. And I like that. Like, I liked in a short amount of time and a short bit of the episode. Again, I would have wanted more of it because I thought it was really cool and interesting. Nope. But why Why don't you want more of it, Pete? 
I, but he, I, well, let me answer Pete's the question. Books. It's just yeah. let me answer Pete's question. Yeah. Like, back the reason he didn't run from the windows back then they didn't have TV. So this was pretty entertaining compared to <laughs> stuff inside the house. He's it like, wow, like, something's happening. Yeah. Dad, I'm watching our show. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dad. He was binging the arrival of the Redcoats. <laughs> yeah. And he oh, didn't wow. have time this to is, look away. This is really cool. This is a cool <laughs> twist. The Red Goats are coming. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't see that. To be continued. Yeah, I was watching right this. Right now. I was watching this tree out my window show, and then suddenly they introduced these new characters. <laughs> what are they cool. about? Yeah. What's One Tree on Hill is the name of that, tr- that show. <laughs> yeah. And then the Red Coats made it. Um, but also, I think, um, to your other point, Pete, the girls didn't hide very well because they were found almost well, instantly. And, in and also, time. all the weapons and all the gunpowder and everything. Like, you would. Uh, like they, they didn't, instead of like running around hiding contraband or like getting ready for a fight, they just kind of walked outside and lined up more like, okay, yeah, take us or well, whatever. So I think the idea here was that the locks, they're not revolutionary war soldiers. They're not uh, crack spies or anything like that. Like, but they, they are just, making weapons in the back. So like, you yeah, gotta they're get ready making for that weapons. Kind of- the soldiers are supposed to come pick them up. They don't expect the red coats to be there and get it. So I get it. Like they do find the women and drag them out at a very quick period of time. And they're like, well, going to burn them to death. I guess that's, I guess what we do, which is horrifying. Yeah. But at the same time, I think we're supposed to intuit when they get, uh, they go and ask for what is it? Captain Crace is the name of the Revolutionary War soldier yep. that Benjamin's the supposed Rebel. to get. Those are the soldiers. Those are the people that are going to take care of the stuff, not them. And I think Benjamin proves that he's a young, resourceful hero. Something that I think we see uh, in the lock uh, bloodline for the whole time. But yeah, another the criticism. Oh, go ahead. One more criticism: uh, storing the gunpowder in the attic above where you sleep. And it's there's something smart. like it's like we found twenty barrels of gunpowder. I was like, dude. Put that over in the forge. Yeah, yeah. From where? a well house. You have a well house. Put it away somewhere Eddie, else. put it away, dude, because that yeah, stuff catches a little it. bit of fire. You got a bang up on the top of key house. Yeah. If I remember correctly, and maybe you're looking at the pages right now, Justin, but if I remember correctly, Benjamin looks a lot like Tyler, like not exactly, but very close to Tyler, the way that Gabriel Rodriguez draws him. Right in the comic, yeah, I th- yeah. All, all the locks sort of have a very all the locks, the sort of young hero locks, all have very similar facial structures. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think I certainly get a sense of Tyler here, and I think that's ultimately you've been speculating a lot about who is going to forge the keys and who is going to end up ultimately being this person. We find out in this episode that Tyler is the one who's going to forge this final bit of whispering iron here. So that definitely is the connection there, even though obviously there's different actors playing them and it's a different time period. So it doesn't work exactly the same way as the comic book, but his character, his Benjamin's character, the way that he acts is very much like Tyler thinking around this problems, being proactive about these things and ultimately finding his courage. Yeah, when yeah. he came back for the shootout, which that was great, you know, just like really cool stuff. And then we kind of loop back to the the cave stuff that we got before us. So we got to kind of see how that all started because it was jarring for for the first time. We said we we're like, oh wow, this is kind of like there's already a fight going on. So we got to see the setup for that, which was nice. And I, I appreciate this sort of we got a taste of it at the top of the season and then we get this this sort of larger story it was cool. Plus, it sort of came into more clarity that Gideon, he sees how powerful the uh, the demon makes his, his soldier and he's willingly accepts it because he's power hungry and he's, you know, in a bad spot. And then uh, he's a much more like cogent, chill demon. <laughs> he's like <laughs> shot up a bunch and he's like. I know I'm stuck, but you wait. It's going to be awesome when other demons come running out of this gate. Yeah, and also I'm going to just do some journaling and chill out while I'm bleeding out. You know. What well, I, mean? I think it also points to something you were talking about the last episode, Justin, as well as something that they talk around once they realize there's this demon army later on in the episode, is that there's a difference between Gabe, who is an echo with a demon, or somebody like Eden or Ca- Captain Gideon, who are human like they have this demon strength but he gets shot a bunch of times he's still alive but that does take him down like that stops him and same thing with like eden ultimately or javi or any of these other rando demons that gabe recruits that are eating the how dare you rando demons 
I mean, oh, those are name all any human. Of those characters. There was the businessman demon. Mm-hmm. You security know what I mean? Guard, yeah, the security demon. guard. Yeah, it was like Blonde. there's Once a lot. Once again, I know we're they jumping were... into this. Eden is right, man. When she walks in, she's like, "What the? What are you doing? <laughs> Who are you yeah. recruiting here?" Yeah. Hey, he got like the mailman, Javi's uh-huh. uncle, or like yeah. just like <laughs> I don't know. It is truly random. Javi makes sense. Detective Matuku makes a lot of sense. Jackie yeah. makes a lot of sense. The rest of these demons. It doesn't are like, matter. Just he wants more. He just wants bodies. Because yeah. as you saw in the school, you just need people to take them out. You know, get the students. You know, yeah. like get a get a Justin type character or a Pete type character. Go Pete's after not going to fall for yeah. it. I no, no, no. I, again, I'd rather like, be cut in half. Says Pete. This is yeah. it's, maybe right. it's going someplace, but the not to keep contrasting it with the comic book, but in the book, what happens is that Dodge essentially evades the prom like they decide to have the after prom party in the sea caves and he's like great you guys are idiots what i'm going to do here is i'm going to drag these students down to the sea caves that might still happen one by you one. don't it, know it, absolutely it might still happen my point here though is he goes after the teens which makes a lot of sense in terms of strength and building your army and everything here in terms of building his army he's going for it feels like no insult to Pete's best friends and favorite characters on the show, but the weakest people first. Oh, come well, on, but, man. But I also think that's he, ridiculous. He went with who he had access to. Yeah, sure. it looked like it was a delivery person. Somebody just ran into on the street. You know, like it's <laughs> it's uh, who cares it, if it's somebody who's willing to follow him. Yeah, he's just jabbing whoever with a demon key. That's yeah, exactly. Great plan game. Again, I'm with Eden here. She's yes, she's right. I mean, I, I, I you made that part clear, but as we saw at the school fight, who cares if it's a grandma or a kid or whatever? You know, if you pile on, that can overtake them. It's mm-hmm. more numbers than individual. It's true. A grandma is with a demon in her is stronger than exactly. a regular grandma. It's right. Something. Mm. Yeah. It's like two grandmas you got right there in one. Yeah, and two grandmas is about as strong as one <laughs> half of well, a That's team. the strongest thing I can think of. <laughs> two grandmas? <laughs> two grandmas. Oh, yeah. man. I once challenged two grandmas to an arm wrestling match. You Boy, lost. Did I, I broke my... I tried Damn. to pull my hat backwards to, you know... <laughs> I was uh, just trying to turn the, the switch on. They, they I tried had to go over the top. Yeah. Hitting the hammers thing and the different strength levels, and it was like strong, very strong, and the top was two grandmas. Two grandmas. <laughs> yeah. What, imagine going full golden girl. Oh, wow. That's like Voltron. Four grandmas. Yeah, that's, that's it. Like... I heard, this is a little bit of showbiz gossip, but everybody was terrified of the, that sound. They wouldn't go near that soundstage because they were like, that's four grandmas. Yeah, How do you think they got a show many. about four retired women on television in the 90s? Yeah, yeah they they intimidated everybody. Yeah, yeah exactly. They wrestled a bunch of execs until they gave them a budget. So I we're think. all agreed on this. Let's move on. Yes. Thank you. You convinced me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought for sure, going back to still talking about the past stuff, I thought Gideon was not going to uh, be beaten by being hung, by being hanged. Um, but it did kill him. And I mm-hmm. think that is, again, showing what they talk, what Kinsey sort of talks about in this is like, they're vulnerable, they're strong, but you can beat them up. And then she takes her baseball bat and pings a bunch of them. Oh, right? man, yeah. that sound was fun. Also, just to take a step back, really liked the Savini's conversation here, just sort of talking around movie tropes and stuff and being like, is this zombie rules? No, it's not zombie rules. Yeah. It's just like hit the not vampires. That, yeah. that conversation made me uncomfortable because she, uh, Kinsey was like, you have to kill a bunch of strangers in town. And they were like, yep, no Got problem. <laughs> this is kind Whoa. of their dream. Whoa, they, they were like, movie, yeah, right? exactly. It, at one point they're like, this is just like a movie, but real life. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's exciting. That's exciting news to get. Like, hey, listen, we can just start beating people with baseball bats and stuff and uh, Grand Theft Auto rules. Let's go. And then I really like as the episode went on, we cut pretty hard into all the flashback stuff, um, sort of showing that the, the that Tyler specifically and Benjamin are sort of coming to the same point almost at the same time. We get to see the creation of the Omega Key, which we yeah, saw in the opening huge. graphic at the beginning of the episode, like we talked yeah, about. Yeah, I last skipped time. that because I don't want it spoiled. It's a very mild spoiler. Spoils. Uh, 
to the victor goes the spoils yeah. um, and then making the gate and then them saying wonder what else we can create uh, mm-hmm. uh, again i don't want to harp on this too much but love a good research montage the stuff they showed josh reading when they cut to that stuff was weird there was a yeah. point when he was reading massachusetts a history and it was clearly stuff with like frederick gideon opening up a demon door and i don't think that's in that book yeah, oh, it, it is. Little, you should reread it. It's in there. Little, yeah. The history of Massachusetts is spotty at best. Yeah, exactly. But I do want to, the big lesson um, that we get from Benjamin's sister is uh, the rules of alchemy. They discover that you need to have both an intention and a sacrifice right. to uh, make a key. And I think that's going to play in big time going forward. And maybe we can talk about that at the end. Let me just ask you guys a question. If someone says to you, okay, you got to make a sacrifice what would be the first thing that you do? Because I was thinking maybe a chicken, you know, something like that. Um, if you're going to you know, make like, the chicken key, absolutely, yeah. No, but how? But it's a sacrifice for you, so it'd have to be a chicken you're very close friends with. Oh, <laughs> that would be tough, you know. Like, or yeah. I was like, okay, I will give up carbs. That's I'm making a sacrifice. My bigger problem, and <laughs> you and I have talked about. Wait, this. sorry, Alex, you're going to whisper. <laughs> you're going to whisper to the iron. Yeah, I want a key that can t- make me fly. I'll give up carbs. <laughs> yeah, that's the <laughs> sacrifice. The keys aren't lent. You know that, right? <laughs> well, I, if someone says to me, you got to make a sacrifice, there's a lot of things that run through my head. I wouldn't think Blood Brothers and immediately like bite open my hand. You this know is I mean? again, and I know it feels like I'm picking on this episode a lot, but I like this episode. I just think me there too. are yeah. little things here and there that you can kind of pick on. Is like, I I wonder if this was edited or shot a different way because things like Benjamin's sister coming out and being like, oh, also I know witchcraft was a little out of nowhere. It's set up a little better in the comic book, her understanding that part of it and being able to give it in. So same thing with the research montage, not quite fitting with what's going on. I oh, do wonder on, if dude. there was more in the past sequences that they didn't use and they ended up ultimately in the edit finding a better way of going back and forth. With this stuff. I'm surprised that you're complaining because it showed your boy, evil Josh being in a library, looking and reading books. Like that should be enough to get you going. You know what I mean? Like you, sh- you shouldn't really be upset about the book he's reading and stuff like that. I mean, I could see the, um, the episode being more chunkier than the way it ended up where it's more like Josh is sort of the ligature connecting these scenes, um, and it's him and we get to see it all play out. And instead they went with intercutting it by the end because of the way it's a bit cutty. But I think it works well in that mm-hmm. it is showing Benjamin and Tyler doing sort of similar things and really connecting the past and the present of the Locke family. Yeah, again, um, I didn't mind it. It's just, it raised questions in my mind, potentially mm-hmm. in terms of how it went. But it, I did have another question though, because you have, you and I, Pete, we've talked about this a lot on other podcasts, in particular, Justin, I feel like you didn't care the last couple of times we talked about this. Why hmm. cut your palm? Yeah, like, it's just not smart. Not smart. Like, why not the back of your hand or back something? Back of your you, hand, yeah. top, you know. Like right, your arm a little arm bit or something little bit. like that. Yeah, like you could use your hand and the palm is always moving. It's just not smart. Well, I think they cut the palm because there's a lot of blood. And this is right. very active. This is the more sensitive part of the hand, the palm. So there's more blood there. And so I think you'll get more blood fast. Um, so it's just the amount it. of blood. I don't know. Well, but like, think but about... it's also, that's the part that holds a lot of things. And that's going to hurt a lot for a Sure, while. it's going to hurt. But if you're making time. a blood sacrifice, shit's going down. Stakes yeah, are high. I don't you're make like much maybe... of a blood sacrifice, though. You know, like exactly. I want to make like a little blood, like a blood sacrifice that's convenient for me mm-hmm. in long term. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah you like, want to hey, get a little bloody nose. This? Yeah, you know, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> well, think about, like, diabetics prick their finger because that's a very quick access to blood. And mm-hmm. even though it's a spot that is could potentially sensitive. That makes sense, though. Pricking the finger makes sense. Your, the palm of your hand is just, it doesn't make it's sense hurt. to me. And that's not well, it's very close to the fingers. I guess. Well, yeah, you just made a blood sacrifice. You're doing something important. you got other things on your mind, just sure. like these characters. Uh, I think it's, I don't mind it. I guess what you said earlier was true. You guys care, and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the past stuff. Let's talk about the stuff in the present because lots Woo! going on there as best well. Best stuff. What? Best, best stuff. stuff. Best, best stuff is in the pre- present. Best stuff is, oh, yeah. Those who ignore the past 
are concentrating on the best stuff. That's what that's I right. say. That's the whole deal. Pete, if this is the best stuff, what was your favorite parts? What did you all like? Right, first of all, you got Uncle Dunk killing it, you know, talking about it being a funkle, a fun uncle. That was great. He well, also let me throw gave it. Oh, real quick before you go further, um, he's very chill about the fact that he just made a demon key that is going to destroy the world. He's yeah, like pretty chill. loose. I mean, he's I, been doing that for years, though. So uh, you know, it's back to him yeah. being him. You know what I mean? The whole Doc family at the top of the episode, I thought was pretty cash. Uh, yeah, the way they started the day, I was just like, hey, guys, this is it's more a little bit more intense. But, but he's like, I want a key. It's And it's crazy how few they've lost all the keys all the yeah. keys They're yeah down to the bare bones of hercules belt and matched i mean ultimately what i think this is about is contrasting with what's going on with nina which i like is the wrong word but i appreciate where they're going with her i know we've talked around this quite a bit on the podcast but she's been so happy in this relationship with josh and sort of in this flirty like very 16 year old mainstream drama type thing but we're finally looping back around to what's been going on in the background with her a lot, which is she still has this hurt. She still has this pain. Everybody has been ignoring her and pushing her aside all season long. And she's been okay because she's been able to concentrate on this romance. But once that's on the back burner, as it is right now, she's able to realize, oh, God, my kids are off doing something. Now, Duncan is off doing something as well. Arid has left. We maybe had a connection there. So she has nobody. And I also love that they're not allowing true. her to heal and get better while not ignoring the fact that her alcoholism is always going to be in the background. I really yeah. like that. And I like that scene where she and Duncan are talking. Yeah. And she says. In turn, uh, Dunk. Yeah. Where she's talking. I wrote it down. I'm not fighting it immediately. But basically talking about like her loneliness and her hurt. And it's always going to be there. She normally turned to drink. Yeah. Instead, she really needs to find other ways of distracting herself, and I like. Well, that. and let me say, I have a, I have, uh, I have a prediction that goes along with this um, that I think um, speaks to that. It feels like she is finally like pretty healthy when it comes to dealing with her sadness. She is aware of it, and she feel can feel it creeping up on her, but she still is in control of it. Um, and I think Josh is not. Uh, the conversation they had last episode, where he's pursuing this uh, this gate because he feels like it maybe will connect him to the afterlife, where he can see his wife again, yeah. all that. And now with what we see in this episode with Eden confronting him and saying like, "Hey, you want to go to this black gate? Uh, let's do it." He's gonna show her the sea cave. I think Nina's gonna end up being there as well. They're gonna open the door. They're gonna get the Omega key, open the door, and then Josh is gonna want to go through. And Nina's going to pull him back, is what I think. And oh, then I, wow. I, before I said Ooh, I really that like Josh that. was going to die, um, I think actually now it, he may, he and Nina may actually have a, a relationship based on their shared uh, trauma. Or what happens is Nina kicks evil Josh through the door and be like, go be with whoever else, you fucking asshole. Ooh, Don't treat ooh, me she like says, that. consider this a divorce. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> That'd be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Off, While he's Ar flying Arnold. out, he's like, but we never go back. Yeah. Um, well, and I also think now that we're getting into a lot of key making and just metalwork in general, I feel like um, there could be a great opportunity. I believe it's for called metallurgy. Metallurgy is yeah. good, or blacksmithery, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But way. there's a lot of opportunity to use Josh's just rock solid jawline to um, oh, hammer yeah. out a lot of these keys. You know mm -hmm. what? I'd, I'd love to see him hammer something out. Oh my god! <laughs> strong, strong <laughs> jaw. Strong Speaking Josh. of Josh, though, and relationships. Stop! We've been talking about him for the whole time. We've Stop. been talking we about love him for we love him Pete. so far. It's <laughs> great. Stop it. What do you think about the stuff going on with Eden? Because I know that's supposed to be uncomfortable, but it's uncomfortable. Yes, but I, I don't take – it's it's not like I don't think they're going to like – she's going to seduce him. I think she, in the, her Needs demon him. way – was mm -hmm. like, this is what I think will get him to do what I want. And uh, it doesn't work on him. He's like, what? Only when she starts talking about the Black Gate does that get him to maybe be involved here. And I think her plan is to open the door and get her own little demon arm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that, I think her plan is she was like, all right, if everybody's making keys, I need to get some of these magic bullets and start getting in on this, which is smart. She wants to be able to, uh, you know, to take the uh, Gabe down or whatever. And, and uh, I mean, it, you know, she could have just walked away or whatever, but uh, it's interesting to see like her come up with a plan. 
And I did appreciate the moment, like you said, Justin, where she comes up and it seems like he, she's trying to seduce him and he's like, okay, goodbye. And immediately yeah. starts to walk away. I'm glad they had that moment in there because I feel like a lesser show might have gone Would the have teacher student that. hookup route. Yeah. And that's gross. And shows should not do that. Why don't we move on and talk about the big emotional moment of the episode, though, which is yeah. everything going on. Dunkle, yes. uh, Uncle Dunk bringing up the GTO. I mean, that was great. I, I, have, exactly. a thought, I, exactly. I have a thought there, P, yeah. because I actually think this spells trouble for um, Dunk's relationship with the car because he don't doesn't talk about call Gracie the, like that. He doesn't call the car Gracie. He calls yeah. it his GTO, which sounds like a breakup. Mm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, saw your role. You know, sometimes he doesn't want to use his pet name for his GTO in public. You know what I mean? I Maybe think he, he and the car are fighting. He and the car are fighting. Whoa, That's like calling calling the GTO is like calling a, a, your ex your ex. You wouldn't use their name anymore. You'd call, call them an ex. Pete, you doing okay? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, Are you yeah. crying? Are you crying motor oil out of your <laughs> eyes? I think we just found a transformer. Yep. GTO is one letter short of GTFO. Get the fuck out. And that's oh, what I think. On, man. I think that I think Gracie put kicked ja- Duncan to the curb. I wanted to talk Stop. about Jackie though, the stuff with Jackie and oh. Tyler because they go around, they're testing everybody with the keys. They test Jackie. There's a little bit of a test mo- tense moment there and she passes. And I hated and loved this moment later on where we see Gabe come up to Jackie. We cut away from that. Tyler comes up. And again, there's a world where the show could have been like, Tyler's strung on for an episode or two, or he doesn't know about it, but he immediately figures it out. And you could see the way that Connor Jessup, the actor who plays him, just like his heart drops because he knows as soon as he sees her that it's wrong already and it's changed. His hands or his fingers are shaking in the shot. The close-up on his hand on the key. Great. But come on, like... The the actor who plays Jackie, like the way when she would like completely changed tones and was like, mm-hmm. sorry, lover. It was like, oh, shit, it's Demon Jackie. Oh, no. Yeah. I have a question, though, about the magic. The actress, by the way, her name is Genevieve Kang. But I, I have a Killing question about it. the magic because the idea here is you can only take the keys from the locks if they offer it, right? Like if they yep. offer it to you. He's standing there saying, take the key from me. So how does that work? Because he literally is like, take this key from me, which to me sounds like offering. Uh, offering? It's yeah. not an offering. It's well, a no, test. She, what he's saying is try and take the key from me. Yeah. Because he, yeah. in his heart, doesn't want to give up the key. He's using it as a test. Sure. Mm-hmm. And I know yeah. that I think there was something about the wording of it that bothered me a little bit because it isn't try and take the key from me. It's take the key from me. Take the key for me, which again, so I don't know. But I don't great know. use it's of fine. the I'm fire cool. key after the false alarm. Have some, you know, Bodie again. Bodie br- being a genius, saving the day by pulling the fire alarm. Also saving the day by pulling back something that Justin, you didn't think they're going to pull back, which is the yeah. find my friend on the phone thing. Yeah, uh, yes, and they brought it, back the, the app. It was real. It yeah. is real. We there should get that on each other's phones. I want to know. Oh. I have that for my children. uh, It would be creepy because when you wake up in the middle of the night, you see that I'm right outside your house. It would be creepy. (laughs) Again? He's outside my door? Okay, Alex, you have it for your children. I've said this for uh, for a long time, but let's do it. Adopt me. All right. You're you're on, son. (laughs) Son? um, Son? So, so, uh, yeah, go ahead, Justin. Well, Uh, I was going to say, like, if we want to, like, because there's the the Tyler-Jackie relationship. Uh, I want to talk about that at the end. Uh, the uh, Krav McGraw shout out. We should probably. Uh, yeah, we very got fun Doug. stuff with Doug. Doug was just in this know. episode. I Doug, apologize. I've goof. been thinking about this for a while now. I was a little dismissive of Doug in our first podcast episode for the season. Mm-hmm. I want to formally apologize to Doug. Good. No. Good I for you. Doug. I'm glad you. I apologize. always liked Doug, but I think I was a little dismissive in my tone and and the words they use my speech i believe i called him a 35 year old man um but uh, that was that was mean and i apologize and i take it back yeah good 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 yeah, doug good is great you. everybody's Doug's... been talking about it so i've it's yeah, been I trending for days <laughs> <worried> about... <laughs> i don't know uh, i don't know he seems like a nice guy and he's does. very funny on this show so i don't very want him to funny. take her in case he ever listens to this podcast i don't want him to take the the That's wrong nice. things away from it there you go 
Um, let's talk about the Gabe and Kinsey um, because we got some uh, interesting stuff happening there with they capture Kinsey and Scott, about to uh, do the demon key to Scott. Um, and like you said, Bodhi pulls the fire alarm, uh, yeah. crushing it. But Bodhi's French- Scott also sacrificing himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a right. short term yeah, but pete I, I mean to ask you i don't know if this is what you're getting towards at this moment justin but like gabe makes a big gesture towards kinsey like a huge gesture like a classic rom-com thing where he's like i want you to be with me be with Stop. me so as a ginsey shipper were you really feeling that moment did your heart start to like flutter a little bit are you are you having fun because I'm, I'm not having a great time good delighting i'm delighting right now that's the phrase that i would use Uh, Yeah, this ties back into the arc that I think they played so well with Gabe over the course of the season is that Kinsey is his weakness, right? And Eden calls it out. She's like, well, I'm just going to snap her neck. And Gabe immediately firms up and is like, no, you better not do that. Same thing here. Like the thing that's stopping his plan, he has mustered all these demons for one thing only, which is Kinsey, I want you to join me. Can we talk about, though, Gabe as a boss? Like, did you see that table of food? Like, what a boss. Like, that spread was unbelievable. Like, there must have been, like, 45 sandwiches on that table. Like, I love the idea, Pete. If you were in Lock and Key, you would do Gabe's bidding without the demon. You'd just be like, I'm (laughs) here, man. Just for the food, man. Just for the food. (laughs) Pete, what are you doing here? (laughs) <laughs> just, we didn't Gabe's even like, the demon uh, key on you yeah Gabe's like did I turn you he's like you did when you brought this sandwich platter in my oh. <laughs> oh man <laughs> it's a classic management trick though oh, absolutely 100%. staff is down hey guess what there's pizza in the break room then everybody oh. feels great yeah that's yeah. how we lured Pete onto this podcast the old that's donut it. on the end of a fishing pole trick <laughs> I was like Here man but wait what did you actually want to say about Kinsey and Gabe Justin so uh, I think that um, you, you're right. I think she is his weakness, and he wants her to come willingly to him. Yeah, that's um, some weird and I think that's shit. why you know we talked about last episode. Why didn't Gabe kill Duncan and Bodie? And it's because if he killed them, Kinsey would never come to him willingly, and that's what he wants and needs. Um, as the, for whatever reason, because of this, like like I said last time, like this echo frozen uh, childlike romantic notion that he's locked into because of who, what the magic that created him is. That's my theory. He's obsessed with her, and he has to have it this way. Yeah, because he didn't have this with with Tyler when he was also when Dodge was seducing Tyler. That was never part of the equation. Yep. It was just used to get ahead and get more power. But this is like something that is real. It's a real weakness. Well, and I'm I'm misremembering whether they did this in the show because it's different in the comic books. But did he have that with the show's version of Ellie? Like Ellie was definitely in love with Dodge to the point where she used the echo key to bring him back. But I don't I I don't know if Lucas felt the same way about her. Maybe. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. All right. So I was wondering if it was like an echo of that potentially, but I guess not. What else would you like to call out? Other moments in the episode that jumped out to you in particular? Um, Oh, the Gabe line, welcome to the dark side. That was fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was very concerned about Javi's house being very close to the edge of that cliff. That is wow. very dangerous. That's an Do evil... Like... Co- that looked like a supervillain house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did like that. Yeah, it, yeah, it was. I was like, they did do a lot to establish that house that we will most likely never see again. <laughs> but man, worth it for the shot. I mean, that was cool looking house. Yeah. Why... Uh, I don't know. I'm afraid of heights, so that would never work for me. Oh, but I don't goodness. understand. Just walk why out people... the back door and oh, fall goodness. to your death. Um, um, legitimately, not to get too into it, but I have vertigo. Like I've tried to work mm, on it, but yeah. if I am, even if I'm not looking, like if I step on a balcony like that, I will oh. start to get shaky and woozy. Yeah. I hate it. I don't like it at all. That's like Gabe when he's know. anywhere near Kinsey. His legs get all wobbly. He's like, oh. Uh. Because he's in yeah. love, and I'm yeah. in love with Heights. heights. Yeah. <laughs> we were in love with the movie In the Heights. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked uh, the way when Josh is reading the book, and he's like, hmm, I'm going to write down a note. He writes, is there a cave near Keyhouse? 
takes up the whole blank page and then he circles it. <laughs> yeah. He's good at history, that guy. He's that's he takes good notes. He's a mm-hmm. teacher. I feel like the he the the more we go, it feels like the the worse Josh gets at his job. Um, well, yeah, he doesn't doesn't do a lot of teaching. I'll tell you nope. that much. No, he doesn't uh, do a lot of teaching. He, he d- takes forgets he has a child. He did like, just straight, straight up Jamie. was like, "Oh shit, I have a child." I was gonna ask. Uh, this is something. So we have some movement with the small world key here, yes. where Jamie takes it, hands it back to Bodie. We have the whole flap with Bodie. Come in on, the Bodie, let J- Jamie on the team. You need numbers. Absolutely. Come but, on. Uh, Bodhi has the small world key now. Why is that? Is that something we're going to see play in in the final episodes, potentially? I mean, it almost has to. It's already been used as a sort of a fun surprise moment last episode. Um, Yeah. And uh, I guess we'll see what the next uh, big move is with that. Because I I do think she wouldn't have given it to him unless it was going to come into play. Yeah. And Bodhi's freak out also, I thought, was sad to see because I really like Bodhi, but... But that was realistic. I mean, that yes. guy's under a lot of pressure. He, yes. You know, it's... Uh, it, I thought and it also, was... they got to start letting Bodhi into this stuff. Oh, my honestly. God. Like, He's the best one point, on the team. Absolutely. At the Benching fact him the makes like, no sense. Yeah. You're going to go to school? Nonsense. No, absolutely nonsense. 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 Yeah. He's the leader. Yeah. Yeah. He is basically the leader. And it, honestly, <laughs> Duncan, who's an adult... Is the bottom. He's the least effective. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. The right. uh, oh, go ahead. Justin. Uh, no, I, I the only gonna thing I was going to say is they need Bodhi to handle the group thread for the Savinis because they were calling and texting one at a time. They need something to stay in touch a little bit. Yeah, better, exactly. They almost lost their shit. But I do want to talk before we go about. Um, uh, or no, I'll save it for my key moment. I'll save it for my key moment. All right. Well, why don't we move on to that? Let's move on to our key moment of the episode, Justin. Since you're raring to I'm go, raring what to was go. your key moment? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Benjamin's sister says that um, the you make a key with um, intention and sacrifice, and um, sacrifice being sort of the new piece of this, the blood. Then we get the moment where um, the we get Rendell's hat. And uh, Tyler breaks open the fishing lure. Great. Uh, Something from the comic Mm -hmm. book. Love to see it. And the whispering iron is only whispering to him, uh, which I think that's a new aspect here, Um, which is stressful to me because I think the whispering iron iron is whispering to him because he's the one that will have to sacrifice. And of everyone who's been turned into a demon, the most emotionally connected here is Jackie. Mm. And this season has been about uh, Tyler and Jackie sort of like being in love, but uh, not connecting. And it's a lot of heartache already built into this. I fear that um, that we're going to lose Jackie in, the, in one of the next two episodes. And I feel like it'll be the sacrifice that Tyler has to make that hardens him to make him really step. Because this season has been a lot about Kinsey sort of dealing with stuff. I think these last two episodes are going to be about Tyler stepping up and being like a badass hero mm-hmm. after some bad shit goes down. Interesting. Pete, what about you? What's your key moment? Well, it was funny as I was going to say that, I, you know, Jackie turning is the key moment because Tyler is a fucking mess. He's like not listening. He's like, oh, we got to save Jackie. We got to save Jackie. Um, but I but the, for me, when everybody else like realized Bodie saved them by pulling the fire alarm and like, oh, Bodie's on the A team. We can't keep benching this kid is going to be huge moving forward. If he's included, if we start including everybody, we're going to be all right. But man, I cannot believe that how little like teachers are watching students at school. You know, like you guys as parents have got to be worried about this. There was a straight bat fight in the middle of you know, right in the bat playground. Fight. And there was kids fighting each other to the death. And no, there was no students. They dragged a, bu- a mob of students, dragged two students across the quad to Gabe, who was just chilling in the library, I think. Um, and no, nobody stopped them. There was no like that is, uh, you know. The lack of supervision in schools is just, it's heartbreaking. Absolutely. I'll throw out as a key moment is Gabe asking Kinsey to join him. I think 
that seems mm, to be a yeah. very clear Star Wars, Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader type moment. And not that it's going to play out exactly the same way, but I think that ultimately points to Gabe's downfall is that he does have this soft spot for Kinsey. It also puts a lot of power of destiny on Kinsey in terms of being the one who can take the fight to Gabe in terms of whatever is going to happen in these final two episodes. So that'll be very nerve wracking and interesting to see. But I, I got to just say overall, like this season has been flying by and has been very nerve wracking and exciting and in a lot of great ways. I'm having a great time in season two. They're taking a lot of chances with this, yes. honestly, which I think is they're, great. And they're telling a lot of story. They're putting these characters through so much. It's such a fun show to watch. I am stressed about these last two episodes. <laughs> if you are stressed, you should probably support our Patreon at patreon.com slash Or talk to club. a professional also, or we, a family member. Yeah, talk, talk to, to uh, just give us money. If you, you can also <laughs> chat with us on our live show every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. to Crowdcast and YouTube. We would love to talk to you about Lock and Key, iTunes, Android, Spotify, Stitcher, or the app of your choice to subscribe, listen, and follow the show at Lock and Key Pod, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, comicbookclublive.com for this podcast and many more. Until next time, keep it locked right here. Gracie, I'm worried. That's the When I say I'm stressed, I'm stressed about Duncan and Gracie's relationship. Um, GTO. GTO. <laughs> GTO.